Well, it's exciting to be here. It's been a few years since I was on stage at Slush. There's so many of you this year. So being here is a personal highlight for me. Thank you for joining me today. Of course, a lot has changed since I was on stage at Slush last time in 2019. There are many new challenges. Market volatility, macro uncertainty, things look very different. But in some ways, this feels familiar. I started CASA in 2000 and Skype a few years later, just after stocks crashed 80% in the dot-com crash. And at first I thought, wow, I missed the boat. Seriously, it was scary, much worse than it is today. I'd given up a good job, stock options, my career to become an entrepreneur together with a colleague. It was nearly impossible to raise funding for Skype. We did manage to get a check of $100,000 from Bill Draper. Even back then, it wasn't a lot of money. So sometimes, actually many times, we were really worried about making payroll. But then a funny thing happened. We managed to find a way through. As our bank balance dwindled, we became scrappy and cost efficient. So what I realized was that more resilient and enduring companies are created in downturns. And based on what I saw then, and I'm experiencing today, I've never been more excited about what Europe is building. The reset presents Europe's first real test since the global financial crisis. And I believe it's also one of the best opportunities in the last 20 years. Because we're here today united by one common goal. We're all in the business of talent, innovation, and long-term company building. And innovation by talented founders is decoupled from the financial market. You wake up, you see a problem, you try to fix it. That's got nothing to do with NASDAQ. That means that the strength of European tech is about building a future-facing ecosystem, one that can withstand economic cycles and come through stronger. An ecosystem that supports the boldest founders, whatever is happening in, in the world. At Atomico, we spent a lot of time speaking with our founders over the last several months. A few of them are facing really tough decisions, cuts, layoffs, down rounds, and even closing down. We must not be afraid of the difficult choices that this reset brings. Just look at Google's layoffs in 2009, or Amazon's stock price crashing by over 90% in 2002. They made some tough decisions in this period of turbulence, and they come through stronger. And it was just a bump in the road. So we see over and over that great companies find a way through these difficult times. European founders created Stripe, Supercell, and Truecaller after the 2008 global financial crisis. It's worth remembering that from that one small check and a few tough years, Skype became the biggest tech M&A after the dot-com crash. So starting a company in a more challenging funding environment forged the resilience 
that made these companies special. So this is where context is critical. We've all been trained to believe that a company's ultimate value is reflected in its valuation today. Well, as an entrepreneur and an investor, I can say this. Your valuation today matters less than you may think. It's just a reality. The cost of capital is more expensive, but it is still available. So we shouldn't lose sight of the ultimate goal to build for the long term. And that will ultimately mean that you will have to sustain through different cycles to different environments. The winning path isn't always a straight line, and it wasn't for me. We rarely acknowledge that the ecosystem needs the firms which don't make it. 50% of startups fail to raise a second round, and only 1.2% can scale to billion dollar plus valuations. We learn through adversity. Even if we fail, we learn how to build a business, how to develop technology, how to solve hard problems, and give a team an opportunity to experience a high growth environment. And I've learned when something isn't working, you have to change it. That could mean making cuts, taking a down round, or even being acquired. Even shutting down can be healthy as it releases founders and talent from stagnant firms to take chances on other companies with greater potential. This is a time of tough choices. It's also a period of enormous potential. A whole generation that has only experienced the good times in the bull market is learning an important lesson. And when applied, this will strengthen the ecosystem. So what happens if you choose not to make these hard decisions? Keeping a company on live supports traps scarce resources, talent, and capital in a company that will not achieve its goals. That's bad for everyone. I know how hard it is because I founded and folded a couple of companies prior to Skype. Each time I failed was scary. It was painful. I spent a lot of time beating myself up about my obligations to my team, to my investors, my customers, and my family. In reality, it wasn't as big a deal as I thought it was. My team, they had a great experience, and they got amazing jobs. Of course, I brought the best ones with me to the next idea. The only thing that crashed was my dream. And OK, maybe my ego. But once it was over, I had the opportunity to start afresh. And I was even more motivated to prove I could build a successful company. So let's talk about the thing that usually no one of us wants to discuss and one of the hardest choices. That's down rounds. There's a stigma. We turned the down round into the worst case scenario. We're embarrassed what it may say about our business that is worth less today than it was a year ago. Data shows an uptick in uh, down rounds in the third quarter of this year with almost 19% of all European VC rounds are fitting this criteria. And this is up from 12% in Q2. The trend is, of course, continuing in Q4. But I'd like to challenge you to think about down rounds in a different way. Because in 
a downturn, a low revaluation means something quite different. Firstly, down rounds are just a function of the broader market. It's the reality we're facing right now. People aren't willing to pay the same amount for a technology company as they were a year ago. Technology investments in Q3 is down 30% for, according, um, versus the same period previous year. At Series A, pre-money valuations in Q4 so far has fallen as much as 62% from the heights in the beginning of this year. Series B valuations are down 57%. And there is no sign of this changing anytime soon. In this environment, a lower valuation is no reflection on you. It's just market dynamics. Secondly, if you need to raise, do it right away. The biggest issue with down, down rounds is that people leave them so late. It's easy to hope that market will improve, and I've seen plenty of founders putting off the fundraising, hoping that things will change. For a company that is pre-profit, that means eating into future runway. And the less runway a company have, the more risk is associated with it. In just six short months, the fundraising prospects may shift from having a choice of clean term sheets from supportive investors to rescue financing littered with aggressive terms such as liquidation preferences and exit vetoes. And that's not a situation that I would like for a founder. So don't let that be you. Thirdly, down and flat rounds are really about growth. Raising money strategically before the point of no return could prove a masterstroke. Any founder would encourage to raise money early on clean terms can continue to scale at a time when others are pulling back and losing talent. This may be the single best time to hire great talent away from comp competition and consolidate your market position. Whether the market is shifting in one or three years, these firms won't have stood still. But what if you have to make the ultimate decision to close down your business? In my experience, when you come back as a repeat founder of companies that didn't work, you come back differently. You have a stronger determination to succeed because you have a stronger will to prove that you can build a successful business. And actually, we need that. For me, the third time we started a business, we invented Skype. The lessons that we learned the first time around and the second time around made Skype what it was. I'm sure there are some second and third time founders in the audience here today. So give me a wave. Hello. Awesome. I'm sure some of you can relate to this because four in 10 founders who achieve some venture funding aren't first timers. And this raises to six in 10 unicorn founders. Those who have the guts to come back fighting are more likely winners. I know this from experience. So the reset is an opportunity. It can help Europe to, to mature exponentially quicker by developing this resilience muscle fast. We can create a stronger ecosystem, founders and talent with extra grit to sustain the difficult times. But speed matters. The sooner we recognize that this is the new, norm, new normal, at least for the foreseeable future, and take the necessary steps to ensure the longevity of our businesses, the sooner we can move to solid foundation and keep building. 
our expectations may have to change. Timetables most certainly will. But this does not diminish our ambition nor potential. There are fewer distractions, and no one is talking about froth anymore. We need true vision more than ever. We can now focus our resources on technologies that can solve large-scale problems with greater urgency. We must show the next generation of talent the true potential of technology in solving large problems. But let's talk for a moment about monetary value. When I need some perspective, I look at the NASDAQ Composite Index over time. These companies have grown their aggregate revenues from less than one trillion in 2000 to almost seven trillion today. Of course, over these 20 plus years, there have been periods of time with less growth. When you zoom in to the global financial crisis or the dot-com crash, we can see that revenues plateaued. But when you zoom out, we see the trend, consistent long-term growth, and the bumps in the road are barely visible. Europe's tech ecosystem is the best it's ever been. We have the toolkit to succeed. This talk today may mean different to each one of you, the economic environment affects all of us. For some of you, maybe it's less extreme. Nonetheless, I hope that hearing about my experience gives you a different perspective about the challenges that you face. Whatever is happening in the market, there are fundamentals that don't change. Entrepreneurs are the game changers for a more imaginative, and sustainable world. Do not change your vision. We need your bold ideas more than ever. Keep building, keep believing. There will be those who say that now is a time to play it safe. But I truly believe this moment right now could be the best time to deliver inspired solutions to the significant challenges the world is facing. There's so much important work to do. So I'm excited to see what you will build from this reset. Thank you.